This interview is brought to you in association with Rabobank. Hello and welcome to the final of Rural Delivery's website interviews for 2014. I'm Roger Bourne and we felt it was appropriate this time to give the final word this year to the Honourable Nathan Guy, Minister for Primary Industries. Minister, thanks for joining us and congratulations on your reappointment to the role. Oh, thanks very much, Roger. Look forward to working closely with you over the next term of the John Key League government. Can I ask, I've never been a minister, what does that conversation look like with the Prime Minister when he says, yep, I'm going to, I'm going to keep you in there and this is what I'd like you to do? Oh, it's a wonderful opportunity to receive a phone call from the Prime Minister when he decides who's sitting around the Cabinet table. I was delighted to receive the phone call. He rang up and said, you're doing a good job. Get on with it. Continue to grow the exports. And uh, I'm back in the role again. And it's not business as usual. It's got to be more than that. And my challenge to industry and to farmers is we've got to keep doing more. Uh, we need to expand what we're doing in research and development, huge opportunities with water storage projects, opportunities to advance free trade agreements. Biosecurity will be my number one priority as it was over the last couple of years when I was minister. It will continue to be making sure we're strengthening up the borders. We've got opportunities also to work closely with uh, iwi and lifting their performance. Māori agribusiness, they own huge tracts of land in New Zealand and there's some big upsides there. Also, uh, hugely important is making sure that we're attracting the youngest and brightest into the primary sector and that we're continuing to upskill those already working hard in the primary sector. With the greatest respect to your predecessors, I sense that while this has always been a key role uh, in, in Cabinet and, and for New Zealand, the, the public focus on, on, on the Minister's role is now uh, highlighted beyond any place it's ever been before. And that is a, not always an easy place to be. There were some challenges uh, in your previous term. What are the learnings you'd like to carry through from, from the things that have happened to date to where you think you can help carry this part of our economy? It is a huge part of the New Zealand economy. It's 73% of our merchandise exports, and uh, Kiwis forget that. You know, we've come through a record 12 months, about $38 billion returned from the primary sector. That's helped John Key and Bill English in particular with his budgets get back into surplus. You know, our primary sector is, is generating around $4 million an hour. These are our hardworking farmers, growers, processors that are producing a quality product. We feed 40 million people around the world. We export to about 160 countries. Uh, New Zealanders don't have enough visibility on this. You know, one of the key jobs that I've got as Minister is to get out and lead the industry. From time to time we'll always have hiccups in the primary sector. A uh, classic one was the WPC Fonterra example. A lot of learnings from that, ministerial inquiries, internal reviews from Fonterra. You know, as I move around uh, the world, and I've just come back from a very successful trip in Sri Lanka and India, you know, these countries say, gosh, New Zealand is upfront and honest. When we have a particular food safety care scare that was, you know, a false result in the end. New Zealand puts its hand up. And that's been well noted by our trading partners. So we rely heavily on trust and integrity. We rely heavily on, on a world-class food safety system and a world-class biosecurity system. And a focus for me and for Minister Goodhue as food safety minister in this term will be ensuring that we continue to strengthen the core and the core of MPI will always be uh, biosecurity and food safety. Mm. You made a pretty big investment in that. You put aside the 65 million for a new bike and tunnel facility. It's going to be at Wallace still. Can you tell us what's going to happen there? Oh, we're making investments uh, certainly in a lot of places in the biosecurity system. A uh, $65 million investment in Wallaceville is very strategic. We've got labs out there that are now pretty old and tired. Uh, we need to make sure that we are keeping up with world best practice. Uh, these are labs that will confirm that we don't have any you know, exotic animal diseases. There's no live testing of animals on this site. It's always you know, the, vet, the vet goes out and collects a sample, brings it back into the lab. The reason that we're making the investment there is to ensure our international trading partners that from time to time if we do have a scare that we can keep the trading doors open. And this is a very significant investment. 
a lot of industry have said to me, oh, this is great, this is our insurance policy going forward. Uh, we start the building blocks uh, early next year, and I'm hugely excited about this project at Wallaceville. What we're also doing is we've rolled out uh, 11 new X-ray machines at our international airports. Uh, also, we're investing more in the dog detector teams. Uh, that's grown to um, from 25 to 40 over the last couple of years. We've brought in government industry agreements. That's where industry comes and partners with uh, the government in terms of readiness and response. We've had a couple of signatories so far with Kiwi Fruit leading the charge and um, mm. pork industry as well and others coming on stream. So you know, a big focus of mine is on biosecurity and it will continue to be uh, in this term. Interested to see that Māori and regional developments in there. What are some of the specific things that your ministry do you think you can do uh, to encourage that Māori engagement with the primary sector? Well, we know that iwi are sitting on uh, large tracts of land over a million hectares. Uh, some of that land's doing really well. It's highly productive, uh, but it's fair to say there is a challenge to lift uh, the viability of the rest of the land. And we're talking in the vicinity of a million hectares not being that productive. So MPI is working very, very closely with iwi, particularly in Northland and East Cape and the Bay of Plenty, uh, to lift the overall potential. And what I mean there is we do a desktop exercise, we work closely with iwi on the ground, we work out where there are opportunities. It might be land-based aquaculture, it might be making further advances with uh, forestry, uh, it might be just lifting the overall viability of the red meat sector. You know, 116,000 hectares of land in Northland uh, is under the ownership of iwi, and we know there's a huge potential there. And when you start analysing you know, unemployment rates in some of these regions, they've got challenges. And that's where MPI is very keen uh, to partner with these regions to lift their overall um, productivity and ongoing viability. And I'll be working closely with our new minister, Tura Flavel. He's picked up, uh, it's a new title, which is the Economic Development of, for Māori Affairs. So. Uh, he and I will be working closely in this space. One of the areas when I'm talking to Iwi that they often talk about is wanting to grow their involvement along the value chain and get closer to the marketplace. When you're out there in the world playing your recent trade mission to Sri Lanka and India and in other places, do you get a sense of, of what the, the potential value is for Māori as a brand to sit alongside New Zealand in terms of them as being uh, you know, high quality sustainable producers with a, with a unique story to tell perhaps? Yes, they do. A big part of that is the culture of New Zealand. It is the history. You know, Māori are around our Indigenous peoples. They do have a story to tell. You know, I've been up into uh, Colombia and Chile and in a lot of these countries in Latin America, uh, they have Indigenous pe people uh, issues as well. And so they want to learn from how we've come through uh, all of those challenges that we've had. And we're in a pretty good space now. And there is an opportunity uh, for iwi to partner and create their own brand, and they're doing that. They're working closely with some of the meat companies, some of the seafood companies. So, yeah, culture in New Zealand, particularly with around iwi and uh, distinctive opportunities in the marketplace, there is some big upside. Another issue which is beginning to define our approach to, I guess, agricultural sustainability uh, and our message both at home and abroad is water. You've talked a lot about making sure that we uh, guarantee safer, more secure, long-term access to water that generates the sort of farm investments that we need. Uh, and then there are, uh, obviously, there's a key conversation going on about how that resource is allocated and used. How do you think that conversation is going to continue in New Zealand over the next two or three years? We've got big opportunities for more water storage projects in New Zealand. Recently I was down having a look at the Central Plains Irrigation Scheme. That's up and underway and the government through the uh, Crown Irrigation Investment Company has partnered with those guys on the ground. We're talking 60,000 hectares of potential land to be irrigated in three stages uh, in Canterbury and uh, this is a project that's going to be worth over $400 million investment, um, massive area of uh, water canals being built, 130 kilometres of pipe uh, being laid. 
the significant thing here, and just in this particular project, is that they are going to take the pressure off the groundwater aquifers by 75 to 80 percent uh, as a benefit. About 15 to 20 percent of that water is going to flow directly into Lake Ellesmere, Tiwai Hora. And we know that that coastal lake on the outskirts of Christchurch City has got some problems, some issues, and uh, having greater water flow going into this historic lake is going to be hugely important. So we know that there's a huge amount of potential and upside in water storage projects. Uh, there's potential to irrigate 400,000 hectares uh, more in New Zealand. We know the size of the prize is worth about $4 billion of export earnings. Uh, it's also hugely important to acknowledge that water storage projects are good for the environment. The reason they're good for the environment, as I've just given you one example, but another one is that you can maintain summer water flows, and that's good for the aquatic and marine life. We've got to go very shortly. There's two things I'd like to touch on. The first is skills. Um, alarm bells have been ringing in the industry for quite some time on the number of skilled people coming onto farms and into agribusiness more generally. What uh, can or will this government be uh, focusing on to fix that? And secondly, the PGP, uh, a lot of well-established programs in there. What, how do you take that program to the next level? Yes, certainly on the skills front, we released a report about six months ago that said we're going to need an extra 50,000 people employed in the primary sector by 2025. We've set a target of doubling the value of our exports from $32 billion to $64 billion. We can't do that without research and development, and that's where primary growth partnership is hugely important. Our industry and government investing in parallel on projects in the red meat sector and dairy and seafood and horticulture, hugely exciting. The upside here is with uh, $6.4 billion, we've had some independent economic analysis done and it could, write, it could extend right out to $11 billion. So investment in research and development, hugely important, but having the skills and the capability not only inside the farm gate, but also uh, you know, farming, when you think about it, agriculture, horticulture is becoming more sophisticated. I'm blown away when I go to the Canterbury show just recently or Mystery Creek in the Waikato about the innovation. We're going to need to attract the smartest into the primary sector. They're going to be future food safety scientists. They're going to be robotic engineers. They're going to be environmental planners. You know, the challenge for us is to get out and work alongside industry, to link closely with the Ministry of Education and Tertiary Education to ensure that we are doing the utmost that we can to put you know, a big part of the New Zealand economy up there in bright lights and say to our you know, 15, 16 year olds when they're starting to really think about where's their future career path to seriously consider the powerhouse of the New Zealand economy which is the primary sector. Here, here, Minister, um, a very appropriate final words for our final interview for the year. Thank you very much for your time. It's greatly appreciated. We look forward to talking to you again in the new year. Yeah, have a well-deserved break, Roger. Look forward to catching up in 2015. This interview was brought to you in association with Rabobank.